In this video, we will show you how to repair a Samsung SyncMaster 205 BW LCD monitor with a dead power supply. This particular unit has no power at all to it, but if you have a failure on the power supply, you may also get just a blinking power light or a unit that is slow, very slow to display a picture up to several minutes maybe before a picture shows up on the unit or one that when you do have a picture on it, you have a lot of uh, wavy pictures and the, the colors are not um, as they should be. You get washed out colors. Uh, all of those are indications of a power supply that's either failed all the way or is in the process of failing. And we'll show you how to do that repair on it and get it back up going. Um, the first thing you need to do, of course, is remove the um, power cable and the video cable. The next thing we need to do is remove the stand from the unit. So we'll lay it down. Take our Phillips screwdriver, undo the two screws, and set the stand to the side. Now we'll just turn the unit over. The front bezels are easy to remove on these. The easiest way to do it is if you grab the front center of the bezel and kind of lift up and tilt it towards you, it will pop loose from the connectors and then you just kind of pull and twist as you go around it kind of pops open like a zipper and there we have it now we need to turn the unit over and remove the back panel set that to the side um, next we need to unplug the front panel control cable um, it does have a small little squeeze connector on it so you need to squeeze the tip and then unplug it so that it will release that connector. And then we need to remove the, take it off of the tape here. The next thing is the backlight controller. Um, we need to unplug the black, the backlights from that board. So we need to remove this RF shield. It just kind of pulls to the end and then comes off. Um, now we see the backlight plugs. Again, those are the little squeeze connectors. So you squeeze and pull two sets. And then we have the backlights unplugged. Now if you gently lift and rotate it to the side, this is the power supply board that we will be working with. So now we need to remove it from the, the case, from the RF shield. So we'll undo a couple of screws here. The typical problem on these power supplies, as is in most monitors is a failure of the capacitors on the power supply board. Um, okay, we'll now disconnect the power supply board from that video logic board. Again, it's a squeeze connector. And then we should be able to lift the power supply board out. Here is the power supply board. And very evident, we have four of the five large capacitors on the board have very domed tops. Um, so we'll take it over to the repair bench replace those capacitors and see if we can get the monitor back up and running. Alright, now we're ready to do that repair on the power supply board. Um, first thing, you, of course, you're going to need your power supply board, diagonal cutters, the capacitor repair kit, lead-free solder, desolder wick, and a 40 watt or 30 to 40 watt soldering iron um, to be able to melt the solder and then re-solder. Um, okay, the first thing we need to do is remove this plastic shield off of the back of the board. Um, easiest thing to do is take the diagonal cutters. You don't want to cut the little grommets; just squeeze them in and poke them back through the board because you will need to re to reinstall this RF shield um, after you finish with the board repair. So we have three of these little grommets. We're just going to squeeze those and poke them through. And now we can take the shield off. Um, the next thing we'll do is remove the capacitors off the board and replace them. Um, even though there's only four of the capacitors on this board that are showing signs of failure, while we have the unit open, we're going to go ahead and replace that fifth one. Um, it would be a shame to replace just the bulging ones and then in a short amount of time have to go back into the unit and replace the ones that we just didn't do because it was uh, not needed at the time. 
So what we'll do is take your soldering iron and your desolder wick. Uh, the way the wick is going to work is you put it on the, one of the legs of the capacitor, heat it with your soldering iron, and the wick will draw up the solder. And then we go to the next leg, do the same thing. It's going to suck up the solder on that one. And then once we have that done, you can remove the capacitor off the board. So we're just going to go around and remove the unsolder the five capacitors on the board. And while we're doing this, we'll give you a little bit of heads up on this. You do need to make sure you use um, good quality capacitors. They need to be rated for low ESR, which is equivalent series resistance. They need to be rated for high temperature and high ripple current. This is not like a capacitor that you would be able to go to a store, you know, a local electronic store like a Radio Shack or somewhere and get. Uh, they just have general purpose capacitors. They are not rated for the high temperatures and stress levels inside of power supply circuits. And they will fail shortly. And when they do, they can damage um, more of the circuitry than just the capacitors going out. So you don't want to compound your problem on your monitor by getting low quality parts. I should have the last one here. Alright, let's see if we can remove those capacitors. Let's see, that one's got a little bit more we need to get off of there. There we go. Okay. Now, when you're putting the new capacitors on the board, if you notice on the side of the capacitor, one side has a gray stripe with a negative symbol. That's the negative side of the capacitor. And then on the board where you're going to install them, one side of the little circle is shaded or has little lines through it. That is also the negative side. So you want to insert the capacitor with the negative terminal on the capacitor going to the negative side on the board. If you install them backwards, uh, they will immediately pop as soon as they have power and then you'll have to get re replacements for your replacements. So you want to make sure that you're putting them in with the right polarity. Um, if you, as you're taking them off the board, um, you can note the locations and values um, to put the new ones on. We have two of them that are um, 1000 microfarad here. Two of them 1,000 microfarad here and one 470 microfarad one there. Um, we also have the uh, locations and values listed on our website at www.ccl-la.com or at the link below if you're looking at this on YouTube um, that will also have the capacitor values and locations marked. Um, all right, we now have the capacitors installed on the board and we just need to do a little soldering and our board should be ready to go. So we take our lead-free solder, touch your soldering iron to the terminal, it's going to heat up a little bit, then you apply a little bit of lead solder, or lead-free solder, excuse me, not lead solder, and it'll solder it on. And you want to make sure that your soldering connection is bright and shiny. If it is a dull gray, uh, that means it is a what's called cold solder joint, and you'll need to reheat it up and apply a little bit more solder and make sure that you have a shiny connection otherwise um, you may have some problems with the circuit. Alright, there's our last connection. Now you take your diagonal cutters and just cut the legs, remaining legs off of the capacitors. I'm just going to go through here.
and now we have a repaired power supply board. We'll just reinstall the um, RF shield here. It just pops back into place. And then we'll take it back over to the monitor and plug it in and see how we did. All right, now we're back at the monitor with our repaired power supply board, ready to install it back in and see if we've revived the monitor. So you just want to drop it in place. We'll bolt it in. you put the little RF shield back in place and the last screw plug your power supply board back in make sure it clips into place rotate the shield back around Set it in place, plug in your backlights, reinstall your shield, plug in your front panel control cable. monitor is seated firmly and securely into the uh, front bezel. Install your back. Bolt our stand back on. Get our power cable. And there we go, a working 205BW monitor, another one brought back from the grave.